Let's get right into it and review thermochemistry so that you're ready for thermodynamics for your Chem 2 class. Remember enthalpy refers to heat transfer. We label enthalpy as a capital H. This triangle refers to change, so this would be interpreted as the change in enthalpy. You will specifically be asked to find the enthalpy of the reaction. We'll review two different ways to find the enthalpy of the reaction. Let's start with reviewing standard enthalpies of formation. Recall our formula looks like this, where this symbol refers to either the standard heat of the reaction or the standard enthalpy of the reaction. And this symbol refers to the standard enthalpy of formation. This symbol is the summation symbol, meaning we take the sum of all of the products and subtract it from the sum of all of the reactants. N refers to moles, which we find by looking at the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Here's an example. We're asked to calculate the standard enthalpy of the reaction in kilojoules per mole for the shown reaction. You will be given the standard enthalpies of formation for each reactant and product. We'll use our formula. Starting with our products, we'll place the two coefficient in front of our first product. Then add the second product. Subtract this by our reactants. Bring this three down and place it in front of NO2. Then add the second reactant. Using our standard enthalpy of formation table, we can plug in the values. I'll replace nitric acid with a negative 207 and NO with 90. Replace NO2 with 34 and water with a negative 286. Next, we'll do what's in the first bracket. So multiply 2 times negative 207 to get this. Add these two values together. We'll do what's in the second bracket now. 3 times 34 gives us 102. Add these two values, and we will now subtract. Don't forget your units are in kilojoules per mole. So the standard enthalpy of the reaction is negative 140 kilojoules per mole. Besides finding the standard enthalpy of the reaction, you will also be asked to find the standard entropy of the reaction or the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction. To do this, you would use the same formula as before, just for entropy or Gibbs free energy. Now, instead of flipping through your book or lecture notes trying to find one formula, I've made it super easy for you. I've created my free chemistry survival guide. This includes all the formulas, tables, constants you'll need this semester all in one place. It even has study checklists that tells you exactly what to study for every single topic. Click the link in the description to download the guide. All right, let's review Hess's Law. Recall a Hess's Law question looks like this, where you are asked to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction for the given reaction. The given reaction is the overall goal. You have to find a way to manipulate these reactions so that when you add them all together, they would form your goal reaction. Recall our three main rules for Hess's Law. Rule one is whenever you flip or reverse a reaction, you must multiply the change in enthalpy by a negative one. Rule two is whenever you multiply the entire reaction by a number, you must multiply the change in enthalpy by that same number. And rule three is to add up all the reactions and all of the changes in enthalpies together. Here's how to approach a Hess's Law question. Since we know this is our goal reaction, I like to start with locating each substance in the below reactions. Our first reactant of CH4 is here, but notice it's on the wrong side. 
we need CH4 to be on the reactant side, not the product side. So we can use rule one and flip the entire reaction. Don't forget to multiply the change in enthalpy by a negative one. Now that we have the CH4 on the correct side, we can move on to the second reactant. Notice that Cl2 is found in multiple reactions. Note, when the same substance is found in multiple reactions, save that one for the very end. We do this because it typically has a way of working itself out. Since we're skipping Cl2 for now, let's locate our first product. It's here, and it's on the correct side, so there's no need to do anything to this reaction. Looking at our last product, it's here. Though it's on the correct side, the product side, we don't have the correct amount. The goal is to have four HCLs, we only have two here. So we will use rule two and multiply the entire reaction by two and multiply the change in enthalpy by two. Now that we located each reactant and product, we can use rule three. We will add up all the reactions first. All of the reactants will be on one side and all the products will be on the other side. We can cancel out like terms that are on opposite sides. We'll cancel out the carbon here and here. We'll cancel out the two H2s here and here. And there's nothing left to cancel out. We can now combine any like terms on the same side. Combining these gives us 4Cl2, which is exactly what the goal was. Since we successfully got our goal reaction, we can now add up all the changes in enthalpy to give us our enthalpy of the reaction. Look, if you're feeling nervous about this class, one, I felt the same exact way when I was in your position, but I want you to realize how far you've come. A lot of people don't get to Chem 2. They decide to change their majors or just have to retake chemistry. Don't focus on I'm not the X, Y, and Z. We always look at what we want to be, what we want to do. Be happy with the little small achievements throughout the process. That being said, if you need any more help with thermochemistry, then I recommend this playlist. And of course, don't forget to download your free chemistry survival guide.